Hello and welcome to a new episode of Is Anybody Out There? So 2020 is coming to an end and it has been a tough year for most. Probably you lost a lot in your life. You were locked in for a long time and you were looking out, wondering what is going on out there. Probably you felt kind of helpless. There is one thing that often helps with all things that affect the mind. Nature. There is something special about it that provides immediate healing. I am not that often in nature, mostly I sit in front of the computer. But I appreciate the rare occasions when this is the case, even more. And I've had some times when I really needed that. I remember a few years ago when I was invited to a cabin in the mountains for a few days. While a lot of people were in the cabin because there was something to celebrate. It was in a very remote place in the Austrian mountains with a lot of snow. While having a walk on my own I had a maybe not so smart idea. I stepped off the path in the right angle and stomped through the snow until I couldn't see the path anymore. I finally stood in a clearing in the middle of the forest in the mountains. And there I experienced something that I had never experienced before or since. Silence. No animals, no people, no gadgets. In modern civilization we are constantly surrounded by sounds. Silence no longer exists. This experience was one of the most fascinating moments of my life. I stood there and somehow I had the feeling of disappearing. There is only one experience in nature that comes close to something like that. When in a clear cloudless night you are far away from light pollution. You raise your eyes and you are taken away by the sight of countless stars. And you ask yourself an understandable question. Is there anyone else out there looking up in the sky? Is he perhaps asking himself the same question? Every time a philosophical mood arises in a conversation, the question is asked. Do you think aliens exist? When I say yes, there are two common reactions. Either people take a step back, laugh and say, all right, beam me up, Scotty. When do you think the Klingons will be here? Or they say, all right, me too. That crashed UFO they are testing at Area 51 gave us a lot of technology. And I also think there are some reptilians in the government. These two reactions are equally irrational. We just have to limit ourselves to what we already know. We know that there are some planets orbiting around our star. And now after finding over 4000 planets around other stars, we know that at least one or more is orbiting around each of these points of lights in the sky. This means that there are at least 100 billion planets in our galaxy. And there are billions of galaxies. We also know that the human mind cannot grasp such numbers, so let's try to take a look at something that gives us an impression. So basically all stars that you see in the night sky belong to our galaxy, the Milky Way. We cannot see most of the other galaxies outside. This requires huge telescopes that collect light for a long time. But if you are lucky, you can see the Andromeda galaxy with your naked eye, our neighboring galaxy, as a fuzzy brighter patch. If we point one of our best telescopes at it, we get a good idea of what these numbers really mean. There are so many stars that we must zoom in a lot to see individual ones. At least one planet orbits around each of these points. And the number of galaxies there are is in the same category as their points here. No matter how unlikely the conditions for life are, 
it had to happen somewhere. That it happened exactly once seems extremely improbable. So the only question that arises is not so much whether there are aliens, but only how far they are away. Even more interesting is the question whether there are some who can ask questions about the universe just like us. If we take life on Earth as an example, it has existed for about 4 billion years. But it took only a few hundred thousand years from the discovery of fire to the quantum computer. Life probably does not necessarily lead to intelligent life. Sharks, for example, have hardly changed for almost 500 million years. This planet had three and a half billion years of complex life, but probably no intelligent species. There must have been an exceedingly rare occurrence of circumstances in human history that led to the explosive development of intelligence. There are for certain many factors that influence the possibility of life or intelligent life. With exactly these factors we can build an equation that could tell us how many planets with intelligent civilizations that can communicate currently exist in our galaxy. We are talking about the Drake equation. It looks intimidating, but it is actually very simple. Unfortunately, we do not yet know the value of all variables. Let's start with the rate of star creation in our galaxy. We know about this one, it is about 1 to 3 new stars per year. Then the fraction of those stars that have planets. As mentioned before, it is about 1, as every star has on average at least one planet. We continue with the average number of planets that might support life per star that has planets. That means if a star has planets, how many of them are habitable? Mostly this is about the habitable zone. If a planet is too close to its star, it is too hot. If too far away, it is too cold. There are probably about 40 billion Earth-sized planets orbiting in the habitable zones of stars in our galaxy. An optimistic guess for the number of habitable planets per star would be between 3 and 5. But for a planet to be habitable, it might take a lot more factors than the distance to its star. For example, having a moon to stabilize its axis. So that's a difficult one. Next, the fraction that actually go on to develop life. It means when you have a habitable planet, does that mean life comes inevitably? On Earth, life was here as soon as it cooled down. If we don't find any evidence for previous life on Venus or Mars, that value is hard to estimate. It is probably high, so close to 1. Then the fraction that develops intelligent life. As mentioned in the example with the sharks, this is also hard to say. Maybe a planet can go on forever with life without having any intelligent one. The galaxy could be full of life without sending any signals. Or maybe intelligence always comes. That would be a value of 1. Then the fraction of them revealing their existence by sending signals into space. Hard to say, will they always send out signals if they are intelligent? Or will they communicate in ways we don't even know about? Well, we know we did. We sent out radio signals and even intentional messages. So that could be a one. Now comes the last and most interesting one. The lifetime of such a civilization. It means for how long will we send? We know most civilizations on this planet last a few hundred years. Will our communicating one also have the same fate? Basically we do not know as we cannot predict the future. If an intelligent civilization just keeps on growing, the galaxy should already be full of it. Because our universe is 14 billion years old. It is called the Fermi Paradox. The fact we cannot see anybody can have many reasons. We guess that there is a so-called great filter. 
something unknown that will happen to us in the future. Maybe an intelligent civilization is always doomed for some reason. In the end it means the equation has not a valid result. But it gives us estimates based on things we find out. A study published this year, link is in the description, has concluded that if we take everything we know into account, there should be about 36 communicating extraterrestrial intelligence species in our galaxy. So why haven't we heard from them yet? Okay, we know that we are a communicating intelligence species. We have sent many messages into space on purpose. One of the first was from the Arecibo radio telescope, which collapsed on December 1st, 2020. Thank you, 2020. In 1974, we sent a message from there to a globular cluster of stars 25,000 light years away. This means if someone is there and sends a message back, we can expect a reply in already 50,000 years. This is exactly where the problem lies. It's a bit like taking a bucket of water out of the sea at the random place and if there's not a fish in it, conclude from there that there are no fish in the sea. We have been sending messages into space for about 100 years. The distance that these signals have traveled is equivalent to a sphere 200 light years in diameter. We call it humanity's radio bubble. Thousands of stars around us are already in it. Let's draw this distance in our neighboring galaxy. Now this is humanity's radio bubble. No one outside this bubble can know that we exist. But it grows constantly. Many signals from others could be on their way. Even if we cannot speak to them, one day such a passing signal could change humanity. And we would at least know if we are alone. If you like this channel, please consider joining my supporters on Patreon. There will be some news on upcoming projects and animations for next year. I'm on 1415 and the real world is incredible.